Hello everyone, Guardian E here with another Azure Lane video, and today we are continuing the hunt to sweep the event banner for the Mirror Involution event. We've been doing our daily pulls, hoping for a little bit of luck here and there, and with a little bit of luck, we'll be able to take a closer look at some of those skins that we missed out on in the first day one pull video for Mirror Involution, where we had a little bit of unfortunate RNG. Now, I'll also be providing an overview of the beautiful, beautiful party dress banquet skins that dropped as part of the latest update, and we'll also be wrapping everything up, wrapping up the event as a whole with our account progress, since there are only a few short days left for the remainder of the event. Now, as always, video will be broken into chapters in the description below if you want to skip to a particular part or past a particular part. And I will just take a brief second to remind you guys that if you like and appreciate what we do, if you enjoy our content, uh, please just consider subscribing, uh, leaving a like or a comment down below. It really, really does help us out. With that, let's cross our fingers and get started on our daily pulls. All right, here we go. The hunt for Boise begins. I have 12 pulls, or 10, I guess, lined up right here. We're going to do two more for the daily for today. And we're going to just keep that going and hope we get that purple flash and don't get trolled and Boise decides to play nice. Oh, we got a purple flash. Admiral Hipper. I have gotten more Admiral Hippers in this event, um, well, than I guess anybody except for San Francisco, which is, that's unusual. She's not rated up. She's not rated up. She's an elite and she's not rated up. Um, I don't really, I mean, of course I, I, I don't, come on. This is like, uh, uh, every time we get a purple flash, it kills me a little bit inside when it's not Boise. Uh, it's just... Oh! Uh, uh, San Francisco! <laughs> what are you doing to me? What are you doing to me? I have enough of her to max limit breaker. Like, any of the other SR... Like, getting more of Archer Fish would have been better, because I don't have enough to max limit break. San Francisco. San Francisco. She she really likes us. I I can't deny that. Uh, apparently, she really, really likes us. We're going to do two more to, again, round out the 12 for today. And yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I can, I can already see how this is going to go. Hopefully, the next couple of days go a little bit smoother and we do end up getting that Boise. I would really like her so that we can just to have her. I mean, she looks awesome, but uh, yeah, fingers crossed, tomorrow is another day, right? All right, we've got 10 more lined up here, hoping for that shy, shy girl Boise. Let's, uh, let's hope. Let's hope she, she's had enough of the shy routine. She's coming out of her shell. She's willing to grace us with her presence. Please? <laughs> Please? I'm begging you here? Uh, the event otherwise is going pretty well. The grind's going okay. The grind's going okay, pretty okay. Haven't gotten Ticonderoga as a drop. I haven't purchased her yet because I am hoping that we will get her as a drop, but um, also not holding my breath. I, I have more than enough to get her from the shop, so it's not a big deal. No elites at all so far, so that's pretty unfortunate. Oh my god, are you serious? I mean... <laughs> I mean, I love New Jersey. I'm not going to complain about getting another New Jersey. That's awesome. That's amazing. That's fantastic. That's stupendous. But I don't need her technically. I just need the Boise. <laughs> so that's pretty unfortunate for me. Um, but hey, you know what? I guess I can not have to burn another UR Bullen, uh, even though I have enough. That's, uh, that's fine. All right. Well, we got no elites out of that. Um... I'm starting to get really frustrated. I'm just going to do a five pull right now. There's no rhyme or reason behind this. I just, I, I feel like I'm going a little crazy. I don't know. Boise, please. Boise, please. <gasps> oh, God. The purple. I saw the purple. Ah, Rodney. Just trying to show off because uh, her, her uh, oath skin is coming. Come on, man. Come on, yes! 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 Oh my god. Alright. Um... <laughs> god, this was so brutal. Why? I, this this has absolutely been the hardest it's 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 been for me to... I can't even talk right. 
uh, to get an elite from a rated up elite from the banner, but we did end up getting her. I mean, she looks glor. I really love her design here. It's so cool with the futuristic kind of ninja gas mask look and the rigging and the lighting in the back. You got these swoops with the um, kind of diamond holographic design. Uh, I mean, I don't know. And she has kind of most of the girls here have like sort of this plug suit look as well. Which is really cool. Love the turquoise hair with the the ears that the bunny ears. Um, yeah. Okay. Whoa. That is like such a huge relief off of my shoulders and off of my back. And I, I don't know. I just that's that was like weighing on me. So we we finally got her. Huff puff. I I'm out of breath, Boise. I'm out of breath here. Huff puff. Uh, I'm Boise of the Brooklyn class. Um, is there something I can help you with? Now that you're here, just Sit pretty and have fun. That's that's all we need. Just just chill, relax, and enjoy the dock. Let's lock you in. And we're gonna, okay, of course, of course, of course. Why wouldn't we get another San Francisco along the way? I believe this is San Francisco number eight for anybody that is keeping track. Um, so yeah, that that is about where we are with things. Honestly, in a vacuum, the past two multis would be fantastic. In a vacuum, the past two multis would have gotten me New Jersey, San Francisco, and Boise. Um, but, hey, you know what? And it wasn't even a multi, it was a five-pole. Like, that impulse five-pole got me Boise uh, and another San Francisco. So, um, so that's fantastic. We will, of course, be showing off San Francisco, not San Francisco, uh, Boise's skin at the, at the end of the video. Um, and we'll keep doing our dailies. Uh, I, I'm probably going to slow it down to maybe one... Uh, one event pull per day rather than the three just to kind of save back up on cubes um, and and hope that we could pull Ticonderoga technically Ticonderoga I really want to get her as well and show off her skin um, but we will get her from the shop you know at worst case scenario so we are we are effectively done with the banner technically but we'll still be doing dailies on it Okay, so I lied because I completely forgot about the existence of the wishing well that's here. Uh, so as most of you know, I'm missing Lopiniatre, uh, so it would be a natural choice to pick her for the wishing well. But actually going through my archives and my records, I noticed that I never got a copy of U101. So I actually went ahead and put U101 in the wishing well. Uh, I didn't need anybody else from that pool, so I just threw Graf Zeppelin in there because, well, she's gorgeous and, I mean thematically appropriate. So let's get into it. Uh, I have nine of them set up here and this will wrap up essentially the the pulls for the event. I, there are a couple of days left but this is going to be more or less it. And getting U101 is actually going to be a lot harder than Lopiniatre. I can always just do like constructions until I get her eventually but getting a uh, Getting one from Special Construction is a little bit tougher because I'm not going to do dailies on Special Construction. So far it's a whole heck of a lot of rares which is to be expected, I guess. Oh man. It'd be great if we got at least one golden flash. I will say that much. But doesn't really seem like it, it's in the cards here. Yeah, that's that's a pretty disgusting multi. So that's more or less going to do it for the Mirror Involution pulls. The Wishing Well actually lasts quite a bit longer than Mirror Involution, so we'll still do dailies on the Wishing Well and hope that we can't get U101 in the process, but at least for now, that's gonna cinch it for me. Dive right into the next segment, which is just a quick montage of how we progressed throughout the course of the event, and then after that, we'll dive right into the uh, skin overview. And of course, montage, montage time, just grabbing this, grabbing that, got some little Enterprise, got some Ticonderoga, got some other things, got some Morrisons, yep, 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 got them all, got them all. Let's get into the skin overview. Now before we get into the brand new skins, I do just want to remind all of you commanders out there that there are a bevy of beautiful returning party dress skins that have uh, made a return from past years and are being dropped into the store for a limited time. Now I'm not going to be going over these older returning skins at length in this video. I did go over each of them at length in a prior video when they first came out, so I will link that video in the description and in the comments below if you are interested in my take in these, uh, these past party dress skins that are now returning. But uh, I will just say, as a kind of a Cliff Notes version, the St. Louis Live 2D, to me, is an absolute no-brainer. Latorio is a big one for me, as well as Massachusetts. I think all of those three in particular are absolutely fantastic. But again, if you are interested in a full overview of these skins, 
we do have a video covering that as well. And of course, as far as the bunny suit skins for the Mirror Involution event, we did cover these in the Day 1 polls video that, again, I will be linking down below, with a few exceptions. And those are the, uh, the bunny suits that we will be going over in more detail right about now. Alright, well, we're going to start things off with Sheepish Sapphire for Boise, and since we get these rental tickets, I'm just going to use them. I'm, I'm probably just going to buy this one anyway, but now that we have Boise, we can finally showcase the live 2D. So let's go ahead and rent... Huff puff, deep breaths. I'll never get used to wearing this outfit in front of others, I think. Aw, oh, you'll get used to it. We'll keep you in there long enough, and you'll get used to it. Confirms that her as the secretary, so we can check out the live 2D animation. All right, let's check out some of the animations. Log in. All right, closing in on the speaker. Zooming out of the eye. Okay, all right. Not the most dynamic intro, but still, still a nice effect. I like that it, it really zooms into the honeycomb of the speaker there. Let's see. Honolulu, you don't like standing out either, then how about really? They're like two peas in a pod, Honolulu and Boise, naturally. It makes a lot of sense there. Very cute. I'm not very good at seeing. Sorry, Commander. Oh, I'm sure you sound awesome. Boise, such a sweetheart. The music's a tad too loud for me. She's like shivering. Oh, I, I have to say that the animation is definitely exceptional with this skin. She's a very, she's a very bouncy bunny. My handkerchief, uh, um, thank you. I love how her ears kind of swing and sway too. Since they're metallic, I would have thought they would have been um, static, but no, it's uh, oh, I don't think I should be doing this much. Hold on, the special touch is uh, a billiards ball flies in from out of nowhere. Oh, that's so cute. Oh, all right, let's check out the rub. Something wrong with my ra rabbit ears. So she even calls them rabbit ears. She doesn't even like pretend they're like satellites or anything like that. They are definitely rabbit ears. Missions to complete. Very cute expression. And I actually didn't notice this in the still art, but um, she actually has a turquoise necktie that uh, that plunges down between her cleavage, and that really honestly uh, emphasizes the the movement overall that's there. It's a nice effect for sure. Uh, let's see. Uh, mission reminder. I like that there's a spotlight on her and the bubbles, the dreamlike bubbles kind of appear. Return to port. Oh, there's the cue ball. Nice little zoom. Okay, so they are incorporating the pool table in the back too. That's always nice when they do that. Mission results. She gives a little V for victory sign. So it doesn't look like she has any any animations where she does completely reveal her face, she's still pretty shy. Um, but she has a lot of movement, like off to the sides and stuff. Like as I'm tapping off to the edges, uh, which is which is pretty nice. Uh, she's just such a gentle, delicate, shy flower here. That brilliant turquoise hair with the side braid matching the, those, those uh, futuristic bunny ears that she has. You have dark, shadowy black of her outfit that accentuates the overall vivid nature of the, the fluorescent colors from both her hair, the ears, the love seat has that features that, that beautiful hot pink. She's got this trim top tapered to her collar that provides a peak of her fair, soft skin from the side of her chest and her bare shoulders. Uh, she continues to refuse to show her face, which is, uh, which is too cute. Uh, she's bashful to the end, but uh, we do get her to come out of her shell at least a little bit here. The medley of shiny plastic and deep muted nylon of her outfit clash together and are accentuated by the daggers, the diamonds of bright blue on her slender waist. Those giant speakers just looming over her in the back make her seem even more demure by comparison. Um, but I'm sure she's going to wow us with her karaoke performance. I can't wait. Uh, it's a very, very cute skin that I think really captures her personality, uh, but also manages to embrace the ambiance of this whole, you know, bunny bar theme. So I think it achieves both, and it does both very gracefully. Honestly, I love how the tips of her shoes glow and the, uh, the ears glow as well. Just such a nice touch. Just great animations, great attention to detail. Yeah, I'm definitely picking this one up permanently for sure. And next up, we talked about this one, Showstopper for Ticonderoga, but I didn't have her, so I didn't buy the skin, obviously. So let's go ahead and use a rental ticket on her right now. This one I'm almost certainly going to pick up as well, but may as well grab it and try it out for a couple of days. So here she is, Showstopper. It's showtime. The stage is all set for the performance. Let's enjoy this perfect evening together, Commander. 
We'll see some of her voice lines. Forget about work for the time being and keep your eyes on the excitement, Commander. My kind of girl. She knows <laughs> She knows why do today what can wait until tomorrow. Uh, next up, the Essex's Air Show. Feast your eyes on the performance. That's pretty cool. Okay. All right. And the lucky volunteer is the commander here. No need to feel embarrassed. Come on stage and join in on the fun. I really love her array of expressions. They're, they kind of run the full gambit uh, of playful and sheepish and embarrassed. And of course, we'll do a little special touch action. Oh, commander, everyone's looking at us, you know. She doesn't seem all that unwilling, so I like that. Now, let's take a closer look at her here. So I'm thrilled to finally have not only Ticonderoga, but also the opportunity to show off this skin a little bit closer, get right in there. Beautiful, beautiful high-cut design of the outfit. It reveals smooth, sexy lines of her thigh meeting her hip. There's this almost mesmerizing glow to her skin with this beautiful shading. The bustier designed top cups and squeezes, her succulent curves nearly spilling out. Open at the midriff gives this peek at her soft, slender waist. Love the different shades of crimson in her clothing. You've got the vertical striped thigh highs encasing those long legs. Bright and festive, glorious stage setting behind her with those brilliant lights. It's a showtime, for sure. It absolutely is. It's in the name. You've got the calm, light blue of her glossy hair just sweeping behind her. She's tossing us a cute wink. I adore that bow tie, it really brings the whole package together. She has that card floating in her hand, makes me wonder if this is in fact going to be a magic show. It doesn't look like a playing card. Um, and she certainly looks the part for a magic show, right? There's no doubt that she will uh, dazzle the crowd with both her looks and her performance. I really do think that this skin is fantastic. And here we have Alan M. Sumner, Charming Rabbit. Charming indeed. I mean, she looks great here. Uh, it's obviously a live 2D, so you can see how her goofy, bright personality will just shine right through. Uh, she seems to have had maybe a few drinks too many, but, but she's no worse for wear. She's still got a smile on her face. Drinks have been dropped, that's for sure. Uh, and I am curious how they're going to integrate that into the animations themselves. Uh, love the twin tail hair alongside the bunny ears, of course. She's got these fun bows and pins adorning her outfit, really nice accents to bring the thing together and really make it hers. And she's just wearing this really fun, kind of oversized and, and very warm looking puffer jacket over the top of her bunny outfit. Just adds a nice twist of style, like her own personality to what's a traditional outfit without obscuring anything. Her bunny suit is, is on the quirky side of things. It looks like, honestly, that her default outfit is the top because um, it almost has a wetsuit look to it. It looks very utilitarian, it has um, the logo and everything, uh, but it, they seem to have added a corset and some frills on the hip line just to, just to give it a little extra flair. The outfit does feature her signature opening at the midriff and again at the bottom of her bust, giving us a little peek at her figure. But I am a little surprised since this area actually is open, like fully open in her default outfit, but you know, I guess they wanted to maintain the whole body stocking look. It is on theme and it looks appropriate. I haven't decided if I'm going to be getting this one or not, to be completely honest with you. It definitely looks like a really, really fun skin. And while I do like Sumner, she's just not personally one of my absolute favorites. But we'll see, I might cave at the end of the day anyway. Hatsuharu in Hatsuharu in the Limelight. So we actually get this one for free just by completing some simple missions each day. So every commander out there is going to be able to get this one for their Hatsuharu. Love the bright, clean colors here. Crisp whites, brilliant blues to match the deep cerulean eyes that she has. Adorable matching bows adorning her hair. Uh, the dress features a, a fairly risque high-cut hemline, an array of playful ruffles at the bottom revealing a garter and stocking combination. The, uh, the like, fan overlay design of her top is unique and classy. The, uh, the long-sleeved gloves open at the figures gives her kind of a delicate look. She's coming down this staircase with a spotlight just shining down on her, metaphorical or otherwise, but she looks great here. Uh, fellow ship girls cheering her on in the back. Really, really great for a freebie skin, so happy to have this one. I think it looks great. Naganami with long-awaited warmth. Uh, you can actually see the warmth drifting off of her. I'm almost concerned that she's overheating a bit here. 
Uh, she's lying down on this luxurious bed with sheets that match the deep, rich burgundy of her dress, as well as her floral hat that she has. Uh, you know, seems almost as though she's actually pulled down her top there to cool off a bit. Since you can see, you can see that the asymmetrical design of her top isn't on her chibi. So I don't, I don't think that's the original dress design. I think she's essentially in a state of undress here, where she's kind of pulled at her dress in order to cool down a bit. Uh, dark stocking encased legs peeking out from under her hemline. She has her signature giant poofy tail behind her. Looks so fluffy and huggable. You know, maybe that's why she's so warm. It's it's her tail's fault. Um, but I, I also feel like this skin is just positionally situational. Like, you don't get a great look at her dress or her face here. It's a unique situation and very alluringly so. I, she's almost in a you know state of, of heat here. Um, but I would have essentially liked a better look at her and her figure without the dress scrunched and her face blocked. But you know that's that's just me personally. Here we have Valiant in Queen Valiant the uh, First. She's usurped the throne from Queen Elizabeth. You can't actually see her here in the preview, but uh, Queen Elizabeth is definitely sulking down there, and Valiant is lifting the crown triumphantly with a wink and a wave to her subjects. Her subjects being us. Uh, uh, gorgeous frilly design of the dress, beautiful magenta with cyan accents, and you know this overhead perspective really draws your eyes to the ruffles and the horizontal reach of the flared out dress design. You know, it's not it's not so poofy or long, but it, it does have some vertical reach as it flares out. Love the movement of her twin tails as they swing and curve around her. You really get a sense of her channeling her regal energy here <laughs> there's just a ton of energy in general and so you get you get that feel that that you get swept up into her energy with her alongside her uh, the backdrop on this one is actually really nice too features the throne the, the room around her really really cute overall it's a nice skin for valiant Black Prince is always adorable, and here she is, adorable in Pop the Cork. She's in mid-celebration, cute hairdo, done up, with a bun on the side. And usually Black Prince's designs are more muted, they're less, they're less busy, they're more simple, not as many accessories, not over-designed fashion, and I think that's true here as well. There is some gorgeous embroidery on the white strapless dress that she has on. But besides the collar and the deep red sash, there's not really that much else going on here. Again, besides the pop the cork theme, you know, perhaps that, that pattern is intended to speak to how she's one of the less bombastic of the Dido class. She's a little bit more reserved personality-wise in that she doesn't swing too far in a particular characterization. Uh, but see, she certainly look, looks good here. She, I think for commanders that like to keep it classic and simple, this is a great skin for Black Prince. Next we have Hood in Dawnlight's Dame. Now Hood here is just oozing ladylike appeal. Form-fitting nature of her dress is hugging the curves of her hourglass figure. Classic white of the dress and jacket combo on her shoulders has this, this pure elegance to it. And the lack of color just really drives the small glimpses of blue in her eyes and at the top of her gloves. The double-breasted button design of the dress is really unique, adds this almost business-like formality to the outfit that you, you don't see anywhere else in this batch. It's not a very common design that you, you see in, in formal wear dresses. And you know that's sitting below the low-cut design of her top, featuring an ample view of her cleavage here. Uh, her hair is impeccably stylized, as always. Flower hat perched atop her head, slightly askew. And that is really the figurative cherry on top, sealing this, this whole look together. You know, I think the muted colors of the vegetation, the uh, backdrop itself, gives this entire piece almost a, almost a rustic and painterly style. It's just really beautifully done overall. Montpelier in Persephone's Throne. Now, Monty is in this just gorgeously striking piece. This preview doesn't do the entire art justice. It cuts off this gigantic looming backdrop featuring a menacing but menacingly beautiful skeletal dragon uh, in an almost like heart wreath design. <laughs> Definitely one of the most unique skins of the entire batch. The use of colors here just creates a real ethereal glow to the whole piece. And Montpelier herself is in this pretty fascinating dress too. The reds and the blacks, the bows and this ribcage design on the torso, and, and that 
That harshness clashes with the shortness of the skirt and the softness of her legs sliding out from beneath the hemline. You have long, luxurious swaths of her hair just swinging around her as she's on this this bed of, of uh, petals or, or something. I mean, the backdrop almost takes a lot of the awe away from Montpelier, who arguably should be the centerpiece to the entire thing. You know, maybe if that maybe if that element had been integrated more with her, um, it might have made for an even more cohesive piece. Um, you know, as it stands, still an absolutely gorgeous piece of art, but, uh, but maybe that would have been a nice way to bring the whole thing together and center the entire art more on Montpelier herself. And here we have Wesser with Urbane Onyx. I have to say, I'm surprised that Wesser is the live 2D this go around. I mean, she's beautiful, don't get me wrong, uh, but there were just so many popular candidates from that batch of ships and since that batch of ships. Um, but Wesser exudes this captivating, sultry appeal in this slinky dress. I have to say, I actually feel like the ruffles here at the, at the top kind of draw away from the overall appeal and make the dress a little clunky. Now, obviously, I am a fan of cleavage. I'm not, I mean, that's no secret. But I think that just generally speaking, the ruffles actually prevent an open view of the, the swooping elements of the top kind of coming down from her collar. And that would have been just dramatic and sleek and fit the overall look a little bit better. Um, again, just going along with this the slinky notion of her dangerous dress. Like she has this dangerous appeal to her. Um, she has a gorgeous white fur across her shoulder and the brilliant crimson of her eyes and her hair are both captivating and alluring. Love the overall dynamic of the skin as well. Coming down a spiral sp staircase, I think there's just so much you can do with the live 2D animation here. I, I don't think I'm personally going to pick this one up. I, while I like Wesser a lot, she's not my absolute favorite. I'm sure we're going to get a, like, a ton of skins for the next anniversaries coming down the pipeline. And I do have some nitpicks here and there about the dress, like I mentioned. But it's hard to deny. I mean, Wester looks fabulous here. If you're a fan of Wester, you should be celebrating because this is, this is a knockout of a skin. And I'm actually going to take this opportunity to rent Hermione's here, Graceful Afternoon Tea. Let's go ahead and grab this one. There she is. Would you care for some afternoon tea, Commander? Hee <laughs> hee. This is one of my little hobbies when I'm not performing my maid duties. Oh, alright. So here she is. Hmm? You'd like another serving of tea? Sure, here you go. Please let me know if there's anything you want. Aw, such a sweetheart. Still, still can't do away with her maid duties even when she's uh, trying to relax. A while ago, Miss Belfast recommended these delicious and economical snacks. Commander, are they to your liking? I don't see any snacks. She's not talking about the manju, I don't think. <laughs> Commander, I see you've finally managed to relax a bit. I suppose inviting you for afternoon tea turned out to be very fruitful after all. Nothing like the royal maids and some afternoon tea to help help relax and unwind. I will try a little special touch. Commander, it's good to pay attention to the time and place when doing something like this, you know? She is a little embarrassed. She's got a little blush going on. Hermione in graceful afternoon tea. There's something incredibly striking about this skin. I think it's I think it's just this the binary black and white, but the blacks are so deep, rich, and alluring, uh, where I think in a lot of the other skins we've seen today where there's a black and white component, the black usually acts as an accent, and the patterns and designs are usually on the white or on the colors themselves. Hermione's skin here, the black is actually what sings. Like, the headband and the bow in her, uh, in her hair and the braids have this bright sheen to them. The top that she has, the black component, uh, is sheer with this lovely embroidered floral pattern across. It cuts deep across the chest and tapers up uh, to her neck there, providing a view of her bare shoulders. Um, she has elegant black gloves, silky thigh-high stockings, hugging her legs with this matching floral embroidery at the top edge there. And the design of the dress itself is just, it's really unique. You know, the thigh revealing skirt, the bare arms and shoulders, the headband almost gives it a casual appeal to it. Um, it, it in contrast to the overall formality of her, uh, her environment and the other components of the dress, uh, the entire outfit is hugging and form fitting all the way up to her neck. So there's no reprieve as it shows off all of her curves. Again, I think this skin is really striking. I think they did a great job of giving Hermione her own unique take on some formal wear. 
And finally, last but certainly not least, we're going to be taking a look at Formidable here in Timeless Classics. We do have another rental ticket available, so we're going to go ahead and splurge it right here so we can enjoy the skin for the next couple of days at least, decide whether or not we're going to be purchasing it for real. But let's go ahead and use our ticket. And there she is. There they are, I should say. Uh, yes, this will do wonderfully. Thank you, ladies. Phew, getting dressed is so dreadfully time-consuming. Ahem, how silly of me. I must not whine in the presence of others. All right, and here she is. Uh, in the default view, you don't even see Little Bell. Uh, but you can see Sirius, you can see Dido over here. Let's check out some of the voice lines. Commander, if you're not making any progress on your work, why not take a break? I've prepared tea and crumpets. Actually, Commander, is this the appropriate way for one to behave? So it doesn't seem like she actually has any uh, unique voice lines for this skin yet. So they, they do this uh, on, with some regularity if they're not able to get the lines in, uh, in the latest update. So they'll have to add it to a following update and we'll get some voice lines attached to the skin. But right now, it doesn't look like there are any specific unique lines for this skin. So let's just go ahead and take a closer look at the skin itself. Gorgeous skin, absolutely gorgeous, an elegant, almost ethereal lighting to the whole thing. You get Sirius, you get Dido, accompanying Formidable, so you have three delectable maids for the price of one, and Little Belle is there too. Uh, she's in these high arch heels and raising her arms up over her head, accentuating the length of her attractive body line, beautiful bare legs, providing some lift to emphasize her substantial bust, Giant tresses of her hair on each side are just fantastically large, full-bodied, almost give her uh, a rabbit bunny-like look, which I guess is kind of appropriate with all of the, the bunnies that we're getting uh, this time around. She has this unique sailor collar with a kerchief around her neck for her dress design. It's meshed with this, uh, or clashed with this elegant design adorning the rest of her dress. These ornate trappings with the buckles and the straps and the floral pattern around her hips gives it this busyness that further emphasizes the blank smoothness of her thighs. Colors are muted across this entire thing, classy black and white affair with just a few small accents of blues and purples on the long trailing skirt behind her. The only real unfortunate component to this is that uh, you don't get to see the full art of the fully finished outfit, um, but it really does deliver on, on a lot of unique appeals, I would say. The inclusion of all of the maids, the fact that she's kind of in a state of half dress, and again, the scenario really lends itself to just kind of soaking in and enjoying the full length of her fantastic, phenomenal figure. All right, so essentially I think that is going to be it for the Mirror Involution. We have more or less cleared out what we need from the shop. We've gotten the little Enterprise, we've gotten uh, the reward ships, the shop ships, and we're just enjoying our time in the bunny bar here in the dorm. Uh, so we can check out each of the ladies and their little chibis on stage. Absolutely love them here. You can see New Jersey just going nuts on the pole over here, which is precious. You've got Boise doing a little hip gyration, and then uh, and then you clearly have Ticonderoga, I guess, singing a song of some kind and doing a little blush. But it, it's really nice how they have their own kind of unique stage animations, as you would expect from, like, the bunny crew, right? So, yeah, this is awesome. <laughs> glad that they threw these in and glad uh, we were able to see them here. And naturally, because we completed the event, we do have the collection uh, for the Black Dragon, a futuristic-looking gadget brimming with a familiar electromagnetic power don't you just love this kind of stuff? Awarded to commanders who have participated in the Mirror Involution event. So at this point, really just to have to finalize uh, Limit Breaking Boise, and then we'll have the chat frame, and we'll pretty much be done with the event. So let me know in the comments below how your daily polls went throughout the Mirror Involution event. Also, let me know if you decided to pick up any of the Banquet Party Dress skins that dropped in the latest update. Uh, let me know which one was your favorite of the batch. Hopefully you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to leave us a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel for more Azure Lane content. We thank you all so much for watching and for taking time out of your day to spend with us. We really do appreciate it. Certainly hoping you're all staying safe, healthy, secure, and united out there, and wishing the very, very best for you, your family, and your friends. And until next time, let's protect those waters.